Here I've got a really nice geometrically stated number theory problem from a Finnish math contest. So let's see what it says. We want to consider a circle centered at the origin, in other words, the point 0, 0 in the xy plane, that has radius r, which is an odd natural number. So I've written that as r is an element of 2z plus 1. Obviously, it's not all of 2z because you could take negative radii there, and that doesn't really make any sense. So really, that's just r could be 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and so on and so forth. So in addition, we want to suppose that there are two prime numbers, which I'll denote by p and q, such that there are natural numbers m and n, where p to the m and q to the n form a point on the circle. Then our goal is to find the radius of the circle. So it may seem like there's not enough information here to determine the radius, but in fact we can determine the radius. And in addition, along the way, we'll determine p, q, m, and n. So I've sketched up a little picture of the situation here, and that is like this. So we've got a circle centered at the origin with a radius of r. So I've denoted that by the fact that it goes to the x-axis at r comma zero. And then here, this point p to the m, q to the n is on the circle. Okay, so let's jump into the solution. So given that we've got a circle of radius r, we know the equation of that circle is x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. So that's a circle of radius r centered at the origin. Then the fact that p to the m q to the n is on that circle tells us if we evaluate this at x equals p to the m and y equals q to the n, this equation is true. So in other words, we have p to the m squared plus q to the n squared is equal to r squared. Okay, but now let's see what that means. That tells us <clears throat> But let's see what that gives us. So we have an odd number on the right-hand side, but an odd number on the right-hand side and a sum of two things on the left-hand side mean those two things have opposite parity. So that means one of them is even and one of them is odd. So without loss of generality, we can assume that this one is even and this one is odd. Okay. But if this guy right here is even, and I guess I should be careful here, it's this whole thing is even and this whole thing is odd. But like I was about to say, if this thing is even and Q is prime, that means Q is an even prime or the even prime. But like I just kind of said, there's only one even prime and that is two. So that tells us Q is equal to two. But next, we can loop that back into our equation up here, giving us p to the 2m plus 4 to the n, using the fact that 2 squared is equal to 4, is equal to r squared. But let's see where we can go from there. Well, notice I've got a perfect square on the right-hand side. Then I've got two perfect squares on the left-hand side, keeping in mind that this is really 2 to the n quantity squared. Now, if I move one of those over, I have a difference of squares, which has a nice factorization. So let's do that. So that means we have r squared minus 4 to the n is equal to p to the 2m. We can factor this left-hand side giving us r minus 2 to the n times r plus 2 to the n is equal to p to the 2m. Okay, but that's actually a really good place to be because we've got a product of two objects on the left-hand side is a power of a prime. Well, which prime? Well, it's p. So that means that each of these must be a power of that same prime. So that means we can write this thing is equal to p to the a, and then this thing right here is equal to p to the b. 
and we need a plus b to be equal to 2m. Okay, so let's see where that leads us. So I'll take those two equations and write them here. So we've got r minus 2 to the n is equal to p to the a. We've got r plus 2 to the n is equal to p to the b. Well, maybe we would like to cancel out the r term. Well, we can do that by taking the second equation and subtracting the first equation. So that's going to give us 2 times 2 to the n, or 2 to the n plus 1, equals p to the b minus p to the a. But that's going to be equal to p to the a times p to the b minus a minus 1. And I knew I could do that because b is clearly bigger than a, given that r plus 2 to the n is bigger than r minus 2 to the n. So notice we've got a similar situation here. We've got a product of two things, p to the a, p to the b minus a minus one is equal to a power of a prime. That prime here is just equal to two. So that means each of these must also be a power of that prime. Well, if p to the a is a power of 2, and we know that p is an odd prime, that means that p to the a must be equal to 2 to the 0. Otherwise, it's going to be a multiple of 2, which is a problem. But that tells us that a is equal to 0. But now throwing that back up here, we see that b is equal to 2 to the m. But now we can take this information right here and throw it back into this equation, leaving us with p to the 2m minus 1 is equal to 2 to the n plus 1. Okay, so let's maybe take this summary to the top and then we'll finish it off. Okay, so on the last board we determined the following relationships. We determined that q is equal to 2, and 2 to the n plus 1 was equal to p to the 2m minus 1. Okay, so now let's do some work on this object right here. So I'll move that 1 over, leaving me with p to the 2m is equal to 2 to the n plus 1 plus 1. But now we can actually factor that, and we can factor that very nicely. So let's notice that this is equal to x to the n plus 1 plus 1, evaluated at x equals 2. But this type of object right here has a very standard factorization. So let's maybe recall that. So this is going to factor like x plus 1, and then x to the n minus x to the n minus 1 plus x to the n minus 2, all the way down to plus or minus 1, kind of depending on what we end with. And then let's go ahead and evaluate that at x equals 2 and see what we get. So evaluating this at x equals 2 will give us the number 3. Then evaluating at this equal x minus 2 will give us something else. I'll maybe just call that capital N. So we've got p to the 2m is equal to 3 times capital N. But that means that 3 divides p to the 2m. But if 3 divides a power of that prime, that means that that prime is equal to 3. Okay, so let's see what we've got. We found that q was equal to 2 and p was equal to 3. So we know what our two primes are. We don't know what our exponents are yet, and we don't know what our radius is yet. But let's take these two and then loop them back into this equation right here. I guess we're just taking the p equals 3 and looping it back into this equation. So I'll write a purple arrow there and a purple star down there. So that's going to give us 2 to the n plus 1 is equal to 3 to the 2m minus 1. But that's clearly a difference of squares. We can factor that as 3 to the m minus 1 times 3 to the m plus 1. Okay. 
But we've got the same kind of situation that we've done a couple of times before. We've got a power of prime on the left-hand side, and we've got a product on the right-hand side. That tells us that each of those terms on the right-hand side is a power of that prime. Let's call it two to the x and two to the y. And here, we know that x plus y is equal to n plus one, given this thing over here. Okay, so let's write this down. We've got three to the m plus one is equal to two to the y. Three to the m minus one is equal to two to the x. So let's play the same game where we reduce this. Maybe we'll subtract these two to get rid of the three to the m object. So subtracting these two will give us a two on the left-hand side and a two to the y minus a two to the x on the right-hand side. Okay, but now we see that y is bigger than x by some previous observations, leaving us with two to the x times two to the y minus x minus one. But now since two is prime, one of these factors has to be one and the other one has to be two. So playing around with it a little bit, we'll see that x must be equal to one, and that'll make y equal to two. So let's just check that. We've got two to the one, which is two, and then two to the one minus one. Well, that's two minus one, which is one. So that checks out, so that works. So we've got x is equal to one, y is equal to two. But now we can loop that back into this equation right here, really either one we want. We have three to the m minus one is equal to two to the one, but that's equal to two, but that tells us that m is equal to one. So let's maybe collect that up here. We have m is equal to one. So now all we need to determine is n. So looping this n equals one back into maybe this equation right here, we'll see that n is equal to two. So check it out. We've got our value of p, q, m, and n. That should be enough to determine what r is given our original equation. So let's maybe get rid of all of this and we'll finish it off. Okay, on the last board, we finished determining the values of P, Q, M, and N described in our problem. Now we're ready to find the radius of our circle. Let's recall that since our circle is centered at the origin and it contains the point P to the M, Q to the N, this equation is satisfied. So now we'll just take these four numbers throw them into this equation and see what happens. So we have r squared is equal to p to the two times m. So that's gonna be three squared plus q to the two times n. So that's gonna be two to the four. So that means we've got that this is equal to nine plus 16, which is in fact equal to 25. We've got r squared is equal to 25. That means r is equal to five. That finishes the solution to this problem. Now, before we really leave this video, I wanna notice that wrapped up in all of this is maybe the simplest three, four, five Pythagorean triple, which is actually pretty nice to see. And that's a good place to stop.